Good morning, everybody. If you're watching Christmas morning or later, thank you for watching and remembering the story of Jesus. And thanks and Merry Christmas. Bye. Well, as Hannah said, good morning and Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching our video this morning. As a portable church, we have to often adapt and modify our schedules. And so when Sunday hits a Christmas morning, it's a lot easier for us to go online and celebrate with you this way. So thank you for tuning in, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this down the road. Uh, we're excited to celebrate Christmas and continue to remember what Christmas is all about together. Whether you're our team Christmas Eve for opening presents or team Christmas morning for opening presents, chances are by now you've opened your presents, kids are running around the house, maybe you're putting toys together, finding batteries, putting on stickers, cleaning up wrapping paper, or, or getting ready for the next meal, the next family visit, whatever it might be. So thank you for taking a minute to, to jump in and be a part of this. And that's that's what I want to talk about in this, this kind of short Sunday morning reflection for us is... What do we do after Christmas? What do we do with the Christmas story? Because all of the season has kind of been building up to this day. You've been budgeting for Christmas presents, shopping, cooking, decorating, making plans, travel arrangements. Like a lot has pushed into this moment of Christmas celebration for your family. But when we think about our faith and we think about the story of Jesus, what do we do now that Christmas is here, coming to an end, wrapping up, finishing the final hours? What do we do with the Christmas story? And I think that's an important place for us to just pause and reflect this Christmas morning. What do we do with the Christmas story? In Luke chapter 2, what we actually see is where the shepherds, they're out in their fields, they're, they're remote, they're away from Bethlehem, they're in, they're in the wilderness, they're away from people. And when we come to the shepherds in Luke chapter 2, the, the story of Jesus' birth has already happened. Jesus is born, he was in the stable, Mary and Joseph, no room, no guest room available, no room in the inn. And so Jesus has been born, but the story of the shepherds actually continues what happens next. And so that's where I want to focus in on this morning is, is the few hours and really day after Jesus was born, what do we do, what did they do with the Christmas story, and what do we do with it? And so let me read this first verse to you, these first verses in Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 8. Here's what it says. In the same regions, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. And then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the city of David a Savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to the people he favors. You see, in the few moments after Jesus was born, the sky explodes with angels singing with proclamation and declaration that a Savior has come. God is true to his promises. And so what we do after Christmas the, the first thing we need to think about doing as we come out of the Christmas story, out of, out of this season even, is that we tell it. The first kind of stop for us as we think about what to do after the Christmas story or with the Christmas story is that we proclaim it and we tell it. One of the first things that happens in the Bible after Jesus' birth is just the exploding testimony of the fact that Jesus has come. We proclaim it and we tell it. Now the truth is today, we don't have angels in the sky singing about Jesus. We don't have the, the we're not the shepherds in the wilderness where, where all of a sudden angels show up and just boom, there's the story of Christmas, the good news of Jesus Christ. Angels would love to do that today, I bet. They would love to declare the glory of Christ like that today, but that's not their job. The job of telling the news of Jesus is actually given to us. It's given to the church. It's given to followers of Jesus Christ. We are now commanded to be the people that go and share this good news. We are the ones that continue to tell 
the Christmas story. We are the angels now, uh, not literal angels, but we are the people commissioned to tell the story. In fact, at the end of Jesus's life, as he goes up into heaven, after he's risen from the dead, after he's appeared before the disciples, he gives a commission to go into all the nations, baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to follow everything he had taught. So we are to go and tell the good news of Jesus Christ. And there are a couple different ways we do that. There are lots of different ways we do that. One of the ways we tell the Christmas story, the story of Jesus as a whole, is is simply by living out the change that comes by knowing Jesus. That you and I, with our, our lives that are being transformed, with the change that Jesus brings to us, as we live it out, as we are different from the rest of the world, as as the joy, the hope, the life that Christ calls us to, the abundant life that we have in Jesus, as we live that out, it's a way of being a testimony to the message of Jesus, the good news of the Christmas story, and the hope of Jesus Christ. We can also tell it simply by by singing. Another example is a singing in church, by, by praising God and worshiping God with our lives. Just as the angels sung in the sky, when you show up to church to sing songs, when you sing songs in your car, when you worship God in, in other ways, you are proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. We do that together in church. You do that even in your own lives as individuals. But then, of course, we just we tell the story of Jesus. We, we live it, we sing it, but also we tell it to others. That we make a point to be, be witnesses ourselves, to go and share the good news with other people. And of course, this holiday season is a great opportunity to do that as well. You're around family and friends and others. You have opportunities to share about this true good news that is the reason for everything we do this season. And so the first thing we do with the Christmas story after the Christmas story is we tell it. We proclaim it and we talk about it. But then the second thing I think we see in this passage is that we explore it. We search out for it. We, we dig more deeply into it. That as we walk away from the Christmas story, as we come out of the Christmas story, we see an exploration of what this means. Let me show you how this works with the shepherds. Verse 15 continues. It says, When the shepherds had left them and returned to heaven, the, sh- the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they hurried off, and they found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And after seeing them, they reported the message that they were told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. You see, as these shepherds are told the news of Jesus Christ, they go searching out for it. And that's really what the angel wanted. The angel said, look, I'm bringing you great news. You don't need to be terrified. We're proclaiming that the Messiah has come and you can find him because he's laying in a manger. He's wrapped in swaddling cloths. Like go find him in Bethlehem and here's how he's going to find him. He's in that stable. He's in the cloths. That's how you'll know the Savior has come. And so when the angels left, the shepherds didn't go, oh, that was cute. Uh, That was a great song or that was a cool moment or they didn't they didn't just kind of sit there in self-reflection. They went and searched out and explored and and tried to see if this is true, if what has been told to them is holds holds weight to the truth. And so I, I love that because. As you hear the good news of Jesus, as I hear the good news of Jesus, as the people we share hear the good news of Jesus, there, there should be a sense of, let's, let's explore this. Let's test this. Let's, let's search and find out if this is true. And so they, they begin that process. But you and I, we begin that process. When you hear the news of Jesus and you go, well, is the Bible true? Can Jesus truly be God? Did he die for the cross? Can I believe these truths? There is the same sort of searching and an invitation by God through his word to say, come explore, come come dive in, come test, and come see if this is true. You know, we, we often in our faith are told that, that questioning is bad. And, and certainly there is a wrong attitude to approach questioning. We can, we can come to the word of God. We can come to the promises of God with cynicism and just a, already a sense of this isn't true. So I just want to prove it false. But there is a questioning that says, 
I want to explore and I want to understand and I want to know and I want to test and I want this to be true in my life. We see that in the shepherds. They, they respond right away and they go find Jesus. And we need that. We need space for that to open God's word, examine the truth, and see for ourselves. Go looking for the Savior ourselves. And so let me encourage you as you walk away from this Christmas story, you move on to whatever's next in your life, let's tell the Christmas story, but let's also explore the gospel. Let's explore Jesus Christ. Let's dig more deeply into scriptures. Let's dig more deeply into the truths. Let's let's read, let's know, let's test, and let's explore Christ together. And then the last thing we see from this Christmas story is not just that we tell it, that we explore it, but also that we internalize it. As we walk away and continue past Christmas, what we do next is we must get these truths and get this Christmas story into our hearts and into our lives. Let me show you the last two verses. Verses 19 and 20 of Luke chapter 2 says this, But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart, and meditating on them. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which was just as they had been told to them. So Mary's there, the shepherds show up, and the shepherds find things exactly the way that had been told to them. The people around them are are amazed because, like, what's going on? These shepherds, these crazy shepherds are running through the town looking for this baby in a manger. So as Mary steps back from this, two key words we see in the passage, that she treasures up these things in her heart and she meditates on them. What that means is as God is moving around her, She's internalizing this in her life. Now, Mary knows more than anybody else about what's going on. The angel has shown up in Luke chapter 1 and told Mary exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, I know you're not married yet, but you're going to be pregnant. The Holy Spirit's going to come upon you, and you're going to give birth to a son, and he's going to be the Savior. And here's what he's going to do. So, so Mary knows the impossible work of God that's going on right now. She knows the mission of Jesus the Messiah as the angel has unpacked for her. And Joseph even knows this because Joseph was told by another angel or told told himself by an angel that that what got what's going on in Mary is is God's work. Don't divorce her, stay with her, and you're going to he's he's going to be Jesus and you're going to you're going to be his father. And so all of this truth has been unpacked for them. But I imagine just like all of us, there are times where we, we wonder what God's up to. We wonder, is, is, is this true? Is God true to his promises? Is his word accurate? When are these things happening? And so there, as Mary's given birth, as they're there in this, this Christmas morning scene, and the shepherds show up to tell all that the angels have told them, it's just another way of saying God is true to his word, and God is at work right now. And she steps back from the working of God, And she lets it soak in her soul. She lets it internalize. She meditates on it and she treasures it. And that is absolutely something you and I need to do. That as we we see God work, as we hear God's truths, as we, we see the movement of Jesus in our lives, as we reflect on the gospel and think about the gospel, that's gotta go into our hearts. We need to treasure it and we need to meditate on it. We need it in our lives. And I I think in many ways, this is, this is a struggle for us because we, one of the greatest enemies to an intimate faith and a deep faith and a meditating faith is just the busyness we live in. And Christmas is one of those seasons that's the busiest of them all. And so it's hard to do what Mary is doing right here, to meditate on God's promises, to treasure up in our hearts God's truths. And so we have to look for ways to cut through the distractions to cut through the busyness and have our souls impacted by the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ, that we need to take this and get it into the calloused, hard hearts that we sometimes have that are distracted by all the things in our lives. We need to meditate, we need to reflect, and we need to internalize the truth of Jesus Christ. I think about the, the first, uh, verse in Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, 16. It just simply says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, 
And as you reflect on it, we, it pours out of us in songs and hymns and spiritual songs. That's what we want. We want the word of Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be deep inside our lives. And so that's a great way to think about this Christmas day and even the day after Christmas. What do we do with the Christmas story? We tell it, we search and explore it, and we internalize this good news of Jesus Christ. I hope that's something you've done. I hope that this is just not a story for you, just another part of the celebration, but that this is the good news of Jesus Christ for your life, that you live it out and you've you've known it and it's in your soul. So thank you for tuning in. Um, There are some reflection questions right now that you can talk about with your family. I just want to give you a chance to have a conversation. And so you'll see here in a picture some of these questions. You can pause the video and talk about it. But here are some of those questions right now. How does your family tell the story of Jesus? As we think about the angels telling the story, what does that look like for your family? And then also, what are some ways that you can tell the story of Jesus more, both to each other in your house, but also to those outside your house, your neighbors, your people at work, your community across and around the world? What are some ways you can better tell the story of Jesus? The third one is, what sort of searching have you done for Jesus? What are some things you've had to explore as you come to know Jesus? And what sort of exploring are you still doing in your life? What are ways you're searching for Jesus? Then lastly, what needs to change so you can better treasure up and meditate on the good news of Jesus? What in your life needs to change, adjust, give space for really internalizing this good news of Jesus Christ? I hope you know Jesus as your Savior. I hope that this Christmas season has helped you know him more. And I look forward to the new year to be able to dive more deeply into these truths. Thanks for jumping on. Merry Christmas. Let me pray for us, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. God, thank you for today. Thank you for Christmas. God, help us as we walk away from the Christmas story to tell it, to explore it more deeply in our hearts, and internalize it. Lord, I pray for all those who may not know Jesus Christ as their Savior, that you've shown them this Savior who has come, who would live a perfect and sinless life, die on the cross for them, and promise that if we we turn from our sins, we believe in him and we follow him, God, that that we can have new life in Jesus Christ. Not not a life of works that we do to earn God's favor, but but a life of a life of the righteousness that Christ gives us because of his work. So thank you that Christmas begins the process so that we can know God, have a relationship with him, not because of us, but because of him. Thank you for this great day and thank you for the way you're working in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you for watching our Sunday morning video.